Today, I'm looking into the PowerTap P2 power meter pedals. Power pedals are becoming a very popular solution for cyclists. It takes away the complexity of having to choose the bottom bracket type or crank length or mucking around with things like that, getting everything right. They just simply ship in a box like this and installation's as easy as putting on a pair of pedals these days. It really is that easy. No torque wrenches required. I have used the PowerTap P1s quite extensively. They've been really good, really reliable and a good source of power to compare other power meters to and smart trainers. I'll link below to my videos on those, which were the introduction, unboxing and all that, what you're seeing here for the P2, plus also a follow-up video after about 9,000 kilometers on them. But today, it's all about the new upgraded P2 model. So technical specifications of this power meter are as follows. Dual-sided power meter, easy installation with an eight mil hex wrench, no torque wrench required, that's a godsend ant plus and bluetooth smart compatibility now the bluetooth smart one's a bit of a gotcha with the power tap p1s and p2s that they'll only send one side power they don't do the dual left right through the one bluetooth channel just yet power accuracy claims plus or minus 1.5 percent stack height 14 mils so they are a little higher than a normal set of pedals you will maybe need to lift your saddle height a little bit if you're into the finer details q factor or the center of pedals 53 mils so look pretty much undetectable there for the width side of things claimed weight 398 grams we will put that to the test and it comes with advanced pedal metrics though they are limited to their app only so it's pretty useless out on the road you've got to have a mobile device to get the advanced pedal metrics hopefully one day in the future we will see them support the ant plus cycling dynamics but for now it's limited to their app only so look, there's no dancing around. The P2s are very similar to the P1s, almost identical. The P1s have been around for about three years now and uh, there's been a lot of changes in the market. Now the competition aren't only knocking on the door, they've pretty much demolished the house and rebuilt. So what's new on the P2s over the P1s? Well, we've got a list here from PowerTap. First up, they list a lighter pedal, uh, sub 400 grams, 398 grams on average. They did the best they could with the current mold. We'll put that to the sword very shortly. Longer battery life, now this is a good one, from 60 hours up to 80 hours of battery life on the AAA batteries as used. More robust sealing, so hopefully that means in the battery compartment and also the bearings used in the units. There have been reports of a bit of bearing play on the original P1 units. I haven't experienced that personally, but the reports are out there in the community. And they're silver. Not sure that's an upgrade. Very polarizing, I think, and a lot of comments. Well, I've had two comments come through. They say they like the silver, the rest say they don't. Anyhow, more on that soon. So they're the new features, the PowerTap P2. Not much in it, but it is a refresh. The original P1s and P1S single side unit are still available for sale um, with significant price discounts on those. There is no P2S. With the tech specs out of the way, let's unbox these things and get them on the bike. Okay, onto the packaging. Same package as the PowerTap P1s for the P2s. In the box, we have some manuals. We have the cleats and mounting hardware, some washer spaces if we need, batteries, and the pedals themselves. Okay, on initial inspection, the pedals are very, very similar to that of the P1s. In fact, I will put them side by side so you can see the actual physical dimensions of the units themselves are one and the same. They really are. There's not much that I can pick between the two. Same molding I can see on almost every angle that I look. Yeah, I can't really pick it with the naked eye anyway. What we will do is put them on the scales and test out this sub 400 gram claim. So first of all, we'll get the batteries in these units. So the original P1s can go over here. We have the P2s for the batteries to put in. While we're doing things right, I will practice good battery uh, procedure, policy, maybe whatever you want to call it, by just putting a little bit of baby oil on them tissue or rag 
just to make sure those contact points are going to be absolutely perfect. Thanks to Garmin for the tip on that one. Uh, okay. Well, first thing I've noticed is the uh, the end cap is a smaller key. So that's not the right tool. Round number two, this is the right tool, okay. end cap is out. It also says on here which way the batteries go. Now I'm going to weigh these with the battery in them because weighing them without the battery in them is not fair. Okay, there's actually a Newton meter max torque on there but look to be honest it's not going to be that critical just don't over tighten the thing so batteries are in those pedals but for a comparison let's pull out the weight scales and put the originals on first power tap p1s weighing in at 435 grams Remembering these are marketed as the sub 400 gram pedals. I'm a little nervous. Uh, they weigh in with batteries at 404. So there we are. That's why we do what we do. 404 grams. So lighter, but not as light as they say. Jumping to the bike for the installation of the P2s, the Vector 3s will be coming off today and the tools I'll need for this task, 15mm wrench, 8mm hex key, the P2s obviously, and some grease to keep things tidy. Okay, installation done. And regarding the cleats that come in the box, I'll be using the same cleats that I've been using for my Favero Asioma pedals, which are compatible with those. Okay, next up in the process is checking for the latest firmware on the P2 pedal. So loading up the PowerTap app, connecting over Bluetooth to each pedal here because the connection is done independently to both. Selecting the left and the right. And we have full battery, which is good. We have full connectivity. We click on each individual pedal, hit the zero offset after seeing the, uh, the firmware is on the latest version. So that's all good up to date and zero offset on that. And we're good to go. So Cleat Cam makes a return for this video, just for a different angle here. As I bed these in, I had a few hours up my sleeve for the ride here. So rather than discard the first ride, I thought I'd go out for a few kilometers and give these pedals a little bit of hell. So you can see here the power number, the speed, the cadence, a couple of corners here, opening up a slight sprint. Apologies for those who get motion sickness. I'll return you to the green screen footage in just a few moments. Okay, not only on-road is included, a little bit of off-road fun. Okay, back on road for a few shorter, sharper efforts and also into a few bunny hops here. Just some static smashing down on the pedals. Look, I've got to put these in their place to make sure everything's nice and rock solid for our next ride out in the road. But a few bunny hops here, a few sprints. They should be bedded in and good to go. All right, that done. Time to get out in the road and then back home to look at the data.
As always for these things, it's over to my favorite website on the internet, DC Rainmakers Analysis Tool, where we can compare multiple power meters with an overlay and see how they stack up. Well, what you're seeing here is ride number two after my bedding in ride, where we did the heel cam before and got a bit dizzy with. But this is a 50 kilometer ride, just under two hours outdoors, giving the unit all kinds of hell. So I'm using the stages left, right, as a comparison tool on the bike. Now my history with the stages left, right, if you've been following along my videos and a few of the comparisons I've been doing, I'm slowly burying the stages in the backyard one foot at a time without actually having reviewed the unit itself. It consistently reads low. Let's leave it at that. If it reads low here, which it does, it's happy days for the pedals, not the crank set. More on that one soon. Anyway, into the data for the PowerTap P2 pedals up against the stages left, right. So I'll just grab a section here where I went hard up a hill, just over 400 watts there for a few minutes. And what we were seeing there is it was consistently reading, well, the pedals were reading higher than the stages and the stages has read low against every other power meter I put it against. So what we're seeing there is consistency. Accuracy, we'll check that inside in a minute, but consistency was good. Quality of the data was good, no dropouts there and across the board there. So 232 on the PowerTap P2, 221 on the stages left, right. Again, as I was saying, this is not really about accuracy at the moment, it's about comparative, uh, I don't know what to call the stages without getting in trouble. So it is what it is. Into the sprint, slight sprint there. Um, the PowerTap P1 pedals just appear to be a little snappier in the sprint, kind of to be expected, I guess, given they're right at the pedals, but the cranks aren't too far from the pedals. Anyhow, it's happy days from there. So all looked pretty good outside. Again, not a really good source of data comparison with the stages left, right. Did I mention that? I won't worry about mentioning that just yet. So that's what we have outside for the ride. Cadence wise, it's a bit of a dog's breakfast there because it's so stop and start outdoors. You really can't tell if that's dropouts or not. But through here, which is the hard effort up the hill, all looks pretty good. Jumping to the overall stats for this ride, and it's as to be expected with the P2s against the stages left, right. The P2s, 194 watts average, stages, 184. It's consistent. One thing it does okay in though is the maximum power on the stages. Not sure what's going on there, but we can see it's only a difference there of about, what's that, 13 watts or so. So outside ride there, 10 out of 10 for the data. Looks pretty good, looks nice and clean, and was consistent as I expected it to be up against the stages. Jumping to the first Llama Lab test, and this one was a complete fail. Now it wasn't the pedals and it wasn't the Neo 2 and it wasn't the other power meters I was using. Something was causing dropouts in the Llama Lab, so I really had to call it quits on this. Where the data was working, it looked really good, but I needed a clean set of data. So it was shut everything down in the Llama Lab. I called it a night. We came back the next morning. Jumping here to the more successful Llama Lab test, Llama Lab test number two on the PowerTap P2 pedals on the Tax Neo 2, a great source of power, accuracy, and reliability, and the stages left, right, which is a great source of power being a little lower than everything else. And that's the consistency that we're seeing here. So jumping into the steady state tests, um, there are two sprints you can see just here because I was under geared for the first one. I had to redo the sprint to make sure I was getting maximum power out of the pedals and myself. Okay. Steady state stuff, 200 watts, psh, no worries at all. Looking good with the pedals up against the Tax Neo 2. Look, there will be drivetrain losses and percentages here and there, but the data's looking pretty good. There wasn't discrepancies of 10, 15, 20 watts, which is really what I'm looking for in this uh, section through here. Uh, into the 250 watts, looking pretty good all the way along there. Into the sprints, well, there's two sprints there, but the sprints, you can see the PowerTap P2 pedals jump a little bit quicker than the Neo. But within one or two seconds, it's the recording interval as well. So there's no major discrepancies there. Into the overs and unders. Again, all looking pretty good within a few watts here or there. The two first ones at 350, I was in a very easy gear for the first one. Really sloggy to get that flywheel. It does have a flywheel on the Neo 2, same as the Neo 1. And I changed down a few gears. Typically, I don't do that in the Llama Lab test, but I just was accidentally in an easier gear for the first set and the power came a little closer for the second set. Again, that is also a straighter chain line, which I should have insured for for the first one, but up to 450, 450, no problems at all. And because I needed some extra workout, I ripped into uh, 400 watts plus for over a minute, just riding along in sim mode, data A-OK -okay there, no problems at all. Jumping to the overall stats of the three power meters I had on the bike there for the second Llama Lab test, we've got averages of 179, 179 between the P2s and the Neo 2s, happy days and the stages consistently a little lower at 173. Max wattage is all very close within ballpark, 1193, 1163, 1166. All good there. And cadence, because they all independently measure cadence, 88.5, 88.4, 88.4. All good. Look, I'd consider that 10 out of 10 for the P2 power meter pedals for power accuracy and reliability. All good. Over to the pricing of the PowerTap P2s, they're currently listed as $899 US dollars. Uh, the PowerTap P1s have had a significant price drop since the P2s have been released, seen as low as 639. 
This kind of puts the P2s in the mid-range of power meter pedals with the Vector 3s being at 999, but again, they're a little more fully featured with the dual left-right power over Bluetooth and cycling dynamics already supported and a little lighter at the same time. The Fevero Asiomas Duo still undercut all of that as well with their recent price drop of around 105 euros uh, down to around 787 US dollars, even seen as low as 739, sometimes even lower on discounts. So the Fevero Asiomas are a pretty damn good deal in this space. Look, I think PowerTap are the ones who really needed to drop their prices on the P2s down to where the Fevero Asiomas. Asiomi, you were fine. You were sitting quite safely where you were. Everyone was happy with those. Um, and speaking of the feature sets of those, the Vector 3s, as mentioned, uh, they're a little lighter. They appear to have their issues sorted now on the Vector 3s, and the Cycling Dynamics is already supported, plus the dual left-right using the Bluetooth channel. So if you're an iOS user, an Apple TV user, you get full left-right. Unfortunately, at this point in time, with the P1s and the P2s, you get the single-sided, and it will double that figure because there's no double dual thing happening. This could be changed in the future, I hope. Uh, over to the Asiomas. Look, they are 100 grams lighter, over $100 cheaper. Um, they do support the left-right dual over Bluetooth and they're very active with the firmware update. So it wouldn't surprise me to see Cycling Dynamics, the Ant Plus protocol, supported very soon in the Asiomas. All of that indicating the pedal power meter space is becoming very, very competitive. I think PowerTap, with their head start in this space, have really missed the opportunity for a massive counterpunch in this space. Now, here's my wish list of what would have been brilliant for the P2s. Maybe coming up for the P3s, we shall see. But my wish list is as follows. So the physical pedal body redesign, to make things lighter, plus support for Shimano SPD SL cleats. The color, gunmetal gray. Everything goes from black to gunmetal gray. The hammer did the same thing, but to silver, not silver. It's not really gonna match a lot of bikes. On the digital side of things, Ant Plus support's fantastic, but the Bluetooth with combined left-right data in the one channel. Uh, bonus points would have been for Ant Plus Cycling Dynamics already supported, so we can get that data from our head units rather than from a mobile device. And they're the ones who needed a price match down below Asiomas to be really competitive in this space. That would have been a brilliant pedal. Look, it's easy for me to come up with that wish list, but that does include hundreds of thousands of dollars in business development. But that's business. If you don't do that, you're gonna be out of business anyway. So interesting times. Look, 2018 has seen a number of refreshes from Cyclops slash PowerTap, but very minor changes to the physical hardware. We've had the Hammer to the H2, not much in that. The Magnus to the M2, not much in that. PowerTap P1 to the P2. Again, not much in that. But look, before I'm thrown off the uh, the Christmas list of uh, Cyclops and PowerTap, these products are good performers in this space. The Hammer has been a reliable performer. People are happy with the Hammer. Magnus, same thing. And the PowerTap P1s. I've loved my P1s. I still use them, not on a daily basis, but they're in rotation. When I need to check power, and see if everything's lining up. So this isn't a complete criticism of the P2. As we've seen, the data's good. They work just fine. They're a great pedal. But I think there's an opportunity missed here. They're really going to have to be a lot more competitive in this space with either pricing or feature sets. Look, there is opportunity for them to upgrade the firmware on this unit to address the Bluetooth side of things for the dual left right and also cycling dynamics on the Ant Plus side of things. So fingers crossed that'll be coming in the near future. So there we have it, my take on the PowerTap P2 power meter pedals. By all indications, if they're gonna be as reliable and as accurate as the P1, and the data look pretty good, they're gonna be a pretty good solution. As for the price, there may need to be a few grams shaved off that. As always, if you like what I'm up to, hit subscribe below, it's much appreciated. We'll be back with more soon.